Oh, I see. Okay. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, I can see Mr. Okay. All right. So oh, she's coming in five minutes, sir. Okay, no worries. So web services will talking about within service now. And uh, in service now as well, HTTP based web service Web services allow, you know, diverse application to talk to each other, right? right. And service now supports both inbound and outbound consumer web services. Inbound and outbound meaning, inbound is a web service in which a third-party system is querying service now tables, getting resources from service now. Outbound is where service now queries, you know, third-party tables or databases. Right and gets information from the third-party systems, right? Yeah. So that is inbound and outbound web service. So ServiceNow supports both the inbound service and outbound uh, outbound web service to both, right? Meaning the provider versus the consumer web services are available in ServiceNow, all right? Now, if you see this uh, diagram, this block diagram we have here, uh, I have classified the inbound web services and outbound uh, outbound web services here. Okay? Within the inbound section, which is towards the left, you see this is the inbound web services we have here, and this is the outbound web services we have here. In the outbound web services, we have two categories, two types of uh, you know, web services that we have, which is outbound SOAP and outbound REST, right? Meaning both these uh, types of web services are available when we talk about, uh, you know, outbound web services in service now. Now, when we talk about inbound, then there are a couple of web services that we have, like direct tables, direct table web service which is uh, you know the direct table web service is a web service which directly expose exposes the service now target tables right directly so if you expose a table directly to third party application that type of web service will be direct table web, web service right will will tell you what that means actually so that basically means that if I have an incident table, let's say this incident table, and I do a whistle in front of it, right? Like I do this base URL followed by the incident dot do question mark whistle. It generates the web service description language for this table which is the incident table and gets you the information related to this table and the actions available onto that table for example when you are exposing this incident table using soap and whistle you are exposing the get method get response method get records get records response so these are the methods that you are exposing and to each method the fields of the table are also exposed and you can see to each method you have active activity due assigned to assignment group these are all all fields from the incident table right so basically you are exposing these tables these fields these methods to somebody who is going to use this whistle okay right now since you have exposed this these fields and methods to web methods to a third party person right so that third party person can utilize this web service into their code and then start consuming data from the service now incident table right now here what we are doing is we are directly exposing the incident table right 
we did direct expo you know we directly expose the incident table so this type of web service where we are directly exposing the incident uh, you know the service now table will be known as direct table direct web services okay meaning right. you are directly exposing your web, uh, web your tables to create this web services okay the other one the other one that we can talk about is import so import sets soap api import sets web services so let's talk about a situation where instead of directly exposing the service now table what you were doing is you are exposing a staging table or the import set table and there is a transformation map which will pull data from the import set table and then push it into the target table right you remember the import sets we did the other day right, right. we created an import set we created a transformation map right. and then in the transformation map we identify the target table and the source was excel xml etc and we pull right. data even from the database we pulled that into the staging table and then pushed into the target table within service now so by having this import set web service what we do is we are not directly exposing the table rather than we are exposing a staging table that staging table gets all the information and data into it and the transformation map related to it runs and pushes data into the target table if that is the scenario then the type of web service we have is import set soap import api sets. right import sets web services now this import set web services can be of soap type or can be of rest type right the difference between soap and rest is you know uh, the way these web services are configured uh, soap is uh, a stateful uh, web services you know restful is uh, you know stateless web service which is more of XML and JSON format soap is majorly XML format uh, it contains information in uh, XML notation formation um, it contains most of the information into the headers you know different types of you might be aware of soap web services right so so the import set web services can be seen into two forms like import set soap api or import set rest api right, right. so we discussed about two types of web services direct table and import set web services let's talk about the third one the import the scripted web services right and we'll talk about the scripted web services and see think about a scenario where you are creating a web service and uh, that web service you know in the uh, in the import set web service we didn't provide any sort of a scripting in there right we didn't talk about any scripting we just talked about a import set and that was exposed to the third party system using Vistal and all and uh, you know the third party system pushes data into the import set table and the transformation map will take care of the data from the import set table into the target table scripted right. scripted web services are slightly different than that where when you create your web services scripted web services could be of rest type or could be of soap type both but when you create this web service what you can also do is you can apply some scripts into that like this okay All right so you can force your own custom build uh, scripts yes so it gives you you know access to the table service now table along with that you can also put some script some parameters into that web service and then use it right so this type of web service that has the scripting capabilities involved into it will be called as a scripted web service. 
Right. Um, uh, Mr. Rahul, when you expose these uh, uh, to outbound, uh, I mean, how secure they are? They are quite secure because when you create these web services, you right. choose the authentication level as well. You choose. Oh, I see. Level. Okay. Yeah. So. Right, right. Like some of these web services support basic authentication, right. uh, supported by user IDs and passwords, so you can do that. Uh, there oh, are okay. adequate rules required for the web service user in order to access those tables. For example, okay. I'll, I'll show you some examples as well. For example, I am utilizing, I'll show you. Uh, I'm using a, one of the web services from so see here so I am using one of the web services from uh, from my instance and when I use it I'll have to provide certain information I'll show you what those information are I love this Visual Studio. <laughs> My system is slow. All right. So see here, uh, I'm showing you an example. Right. So when we have to use web services, you have to get the service reference first. For example, in this case, what I'm doing is I am creating an incident web service. I created that into my service now instance. And then I called that incident web service, the Vistal, the incident Vistal into my project here. And I included that as a service reference. Right? I'll, I'll, you know, it is opening up and I'll show you. So see what I have done here is, So see here I included yeah. included this visual as a service reference, right? When I do right. so when I do so it will ask for user ID and password to authenticate at this level, which is good. Right, but apart from that, we have to supply whenever our our third party .NET application is going to use this web service, we'll have to supply the credentials for the you uh, for that web service. So see, I created this service reference here, and I am creating an object of that service reference here. Apart from that, I'll have to create these. You know, I'll have to pass the user ID and password for the user who is supposed to interact with the incident table. Right. right. So I created one user, WS user into my instance, who is supposed to do interaction with this incident table. Now, if I go to this WS user, you will see that if this WS user does not contain adequate permission, this person will not be able to do, you know, activities onto this web services. He will not be able to perform those activities. It will say oh, in sub insufficient rights and all right, right, right. right so see here this is the ws user that i have the web service user what i have done here is i have given him him a very specific set of rules one is the soap rule soap, right. right because this this web service that i have exposed to this user is a soap web service right so i have exposed the soap rule Another one is U underscore ticket user. And U underscore ticket user role I have provided because this is the import set web service that I have created. Uh, and to, to access that import set, see system web services. Within system web services, I have created a you know web service known as ticket. To access this ticket web service, Right, which we have u underscore ticket dot do wsdl. If you see right. here, 
if I configure this, you will see that I have this u underscore ticket dot do question mark w s tail. Right. 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 So right. to access this whistle, I have allowed that user with a permission with a rule which is known as u underscore ticket user. Right. So if I pull that u underscore ticket user rule from that user w s user, so that user will not be able to perform operation onto the same port set web service right uh, so protected by roles and the type of authentication that we have uh, ensures that the web services are secure and the data transaction okay. that you are doing is safe right okay okay uh, right all right so we talked about uh, direct web services we talked about import set web services we talked about descriptive web services there is a json v2 rest service as well uh, this is again a type of inbound web service that we have which you know has a json format so that basically exposes data into json format directly from the table uh, let me see JSON V2. So this will what what it will do is basically this is the way you can generate a you know JSON response from the table. See, let me open up a plugin. So this is basically uh, basically a uh, way JSON V2 is another uh, you know API format using which you can get data into JSON format, right? Uh, you know, get the table exposed in form of JSON. Uh, along with the data right. and then you can par parse it and use it within your application right? right so this is another type of web service available here the last one that that is there in terms of inbound web service is the odbc driver web service and uh, you know as the name suggests using this odbc driver web service what you can do is you can connect with uh, you know some databases like MySQL, uh, you know uh, Microsoft SQL Server, using the ODBC driver and the DSN that you set into the into your you know system environment. Now, what is the benefit of it? Mm -hmm. So, if you create this ODBC driver web service, so the benefit is you can directly you know you can go into my sql server my microsoft sql server and create service now table as a linked server right you can add service now as a linked server there into my sql uh, ms sql server and then there will there can be a direct interaction between the microsoft sql server database that you have and the service now database that we have right so direct interaction will be possible directly from the SQL Server environment, SQL Server database to ServiceNow database. So this type of web service, if you do so using the ODBC drivers, so the type of web service that we are talking about is the ODBC driver web service. Right. <clears throat> now, we talked about, uh, you know, definition wise, we talked about what we have into these web services. Right. And and see in this diagram we also have the sectional systems which is C sharp Java HP based or MAD based or any technology which understands soaps and rest will be able to consume these web services. So this is what it is telling here this diagram. All right. Right. Now. This we have done already. Now sometimes what we have to do is. You know, sometimes we have to uh, import data into ServiceNow. Sometimes we have to integrate data into ServiceNow, right? And the decision we can take, you know, when do we want to integrate, when do we want to import, right? Some use cases, 
like if you have to migrate legacy data to an instance when the data is available in a supported import format you will you know you will import the data instead of integrating it think about the master database you know master table scenario where you want to get master data from the tables uh, from different sources into your you know target table so that is the scenario where you will do import as against to integrate using a web service does it make sense yes other the second one is synchronize data with an external application so if you have to synchronize data with external application you will not think of import importing data rather than you will think of integrating it because you have to you know you have to do transaction on the basis of different events that happen right uh, during the runtime so in that case you will be basically integrating with external application right and you will determine right. if the integration needs both inbound and outbound communication meaning you want to become as a producer or a consumer or both that you have to you know decide you know what type of integration you want to do right. third use case if you have to perform bulk updates containing many records do import set you know create import the uh, import set uh, and import data using that and you can schedule transformation to reduce the performance impact as well right right see we are talking about two things like in the example of the import set web service into the ticket web service that we created so what we did is we created a web service we are pushing data into this ticket staging table right once we have pushed data into ticket staging table to reduce performance impact what we can do is we can schedule transformation which can happen at the later point of time as well right right so so that is something that you can do put a transformation map along with the import set web service which will help you out pushing data into uh, your service node target tables without having impact onto the system for example i can create this web service import set um and um, i i can push data into the web service you know uh, the staging table throughout the day throughout the day but i'll only run transformation during the midnight when the you know system is used least right so that is something that i can do the fourth right. the f uh, yeah oh, okay go ahead no go ahead i'll ask in the last, okay. last. So the last use case that I have here on the chart is send externally generated records to an instance as the records are created or updated. And in this case, we'll do integrate with a synchronous web service. Consider using the REST API if supported by the external application. So these are the things that right. we'll be doing. Yeah, go ahead now. So which, which use case, I mean, mostly is used on like average basis? Oh, both will be used. You will be using import sets as well. You will be using uh, sync. You you will be using the web services as well. Uh, as well. Both will be used. Okay. Both will be used. Okay. Now this is what we were talking about: the classification of web services, and you can see. Uh, four types of web services inbound web services we have here starting with web service import set we saw that the u ticket and we'll see it again the u ticket web service the other one is the web services you know third one is the, this is you know this web service that it is talking about is the direct web service right third one is a scripted web service and the last is odbc right. driver right all right now, if you talk about this uh, direct web service, what if we had this table, let's say, what is the table? Now, not all table can be exposed, right? All tables cannot be exposed. You have to specify what table you want to expose to users. If you do not do so, your table will not be exposed and you cannot generate the visual for that table. Let me see if we have this whistle for this table. Okay, this table we have a whistle. Now, if you remember, when we were creating tables, there was a property into that table 
that will decide if the table has to be exposed as a web service or not. So if I go configure this table, I'll show you that property. Application access. Can you remember this property? Allow right. access to this table via web service. Right. So yeah. this, is a, this is a property that makes a table extendable using web service. Not extendable, accessible using web services. Right. If you do not take this on, your table will not be, you know, qualified to expose itself using a web service. So make sure whenever you are exposing a table, make sure that this property is set up accordingly. Right? I see. Right. Now also make sure that the access control rules that you have created permit the user to do operations on this table. For example, I created this table ticket table, right? That is U ticket. Right. I have this U ticket table. If I go in here, see, I have this U ticket table. I go and do configure table. Right? When I go in here, I show you what I have done is I have created one access control rule, right? That is just for creation can create right? right can create and the role that it contains is u underscore ticket underscore user and this is the reason the user that i have the ws user contains this u underscore ticket underscore user role right because i wanted this user to access this table oh i see right right, right. see this yeah. role is there so this right. is, this is the reason i have this role associated to that table Right? right so you will have to create adequate roles uh, onto the tables and those roles can be assigned to the user and then only the user will be able to perform operations onto the table okay right so what we talked about is there are certain tables which are set to be accessed by a web service where the property allow web service uh, allow web services access you know allow access to this table where web services is checked as true if that is checked as true then you can expose your tables and some third party can use that table you know um, and the responses you get from that web service can be in in, in form of a soap soap web service or visual response or a restful web service both right, right. Now, now the same table, this incident or the ticket table can be exposed in terms of a REST API as well, right? So to generate the REST API, we have a REST API Explorer here within System Web Services. And that System Web Services, uh, you know, this System Web Services REST API Explorer will tell you how to access the tables using a REST API format. For example, oh. For example, let's say that I want to do a get operation onto the incident table. So what I'll do is I'll have this incident table here, right? And without having any parameter, let's do this. And I'm going to, you know, we have this request headers, we have the response format, and I'm just doing send. Right? See, it is giving me a 200 OK message. And the service now script that it generated, it is script it generates some script as well that you can use into your programming. And that is script we will use here. So let me put that here onto the screen. You can see here this is the endpoint that it opened by itself. Right? It opened nice. it opened the business, you know, this is the base URL, followed by API, followed by now, followed by table, followed by incident, question mark, sys param limit one. So if I copy this one and I open this into browser, if I go here and open this in browser, let's see what it does. It will ask for user, user ID and password, right? So basic authentication right. is there. So if right. I do WS user, 
and I provide its password let's see what it does it comes back to mm. us with the results from the database okay. with this parameter this, this param limit one I see one response coming in if I do it two, it should show me two results so results wait it should show me multiple results okay why is it not giving me multiple results maybe this user has just one uh, because I have activated the domain separation plugin as well so this is the reason this probably this user is getting just one one incident because this user has one lesson so let me change it so I'll copy this here again this is security see uh, I have my domain separation plugin enabled so it will only show me those incidents which is accessible by me right? not all the incidents so even if I have yeah. logged in I'll only see the one that you know that contains the information belongs to me actually that's right so I mean using this uh, rest API Explorer I was able to get an endpoint let me do this admin and admin password oh, it downloaded this JSON I can open this JSON now And this gives me it probably has more than wow. one. So this gives me the JSON for the incident. Okay. Okay. So I have now more than one incident coming in. See? This INC one zero zero three nine. INC one zero zero three five. One zero zero nine. 10063 so according to the access level that you have you will get different responses right so for admin it gave me 10 responses but for that user WS user it was only giving me one response because that user was supposed to get just one response from the uh, from the database all right okay. so now what we did is we have a rest API you know exposed to us for the incident table that can supply data to us into JSON format see this this code snippet that was generated here we can specify that we want to use application JSON or XML or whatever so it can supply us supply us data into JSON format now it will expect a user ID and password that you have to supply so you will do basically request dot set basic auth now since this is a REST message API that we have to access and use this API within ServiceNow we'll be using a, uh, a class which is known as REST message v2 right if it was a SOAP, SOAP web service then we will be using SOAP message v2 right so, so this code snippet that we have we are doing you know request equals news SNWS dot rest message uh, rest message v2 and here we are supplying the endpoint here we are specifying the HTTP method type which is get user ID and password supplying the user ID password to the request you know supplying the request header type which is application JSON and finally we are executing this when we execute this yeah. we do request to execute it will basically get us the response object and the response object will then be stored into this response variable and you can log it or you can parse it and then get the value out of it and display it onto the form right, right. so this yeah go ahead uh, my question was Mr. Rahul when we expose this uh, which kind of third party applications we are using any example yeah so so this is a custom application that I have written this is a dotnet application that I have written I'll show yeah, you some interface yeah, right. number one you can write your own dotnet application or Java application or a Perl application or shell script or whatever 
right right you can write your own application number two you can integrate with some integrate with some third party application any third party application which can support web services for example bmc remedy you can interface with bmc right. remedy and right. 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 bmc remedy is capable of utilizing soap rest web services so you can con integrate with bmc remedy uh, okay. salesforce.com so that is also capable of uh, handling you know right. uh, web services so you you can integrate using web services you can integrate with salesforce.com right? so stuff like right. that uh, altris so you can use altris as well to do so you can integrate with some other you know the popular products that we have into the market which is uh, which are capable of using the web services you can do use those web services uh, those third party applications using web services okay All right That's now i'll show you what i'm doing here so i'll start this custom project that i have created the custom application that i have and uh, and like we generated this code for the ServiceNow application, right? The ServiceNow code we generated, we can also generate, uh, you know, non-ServiceNow script as well. See, I clicked on this ServiceNow script to generate the REST API code for the incident table. If I click on JavaScript, it will generate me the JavaScript code for the, oh, yeah, for the same REST API that we have, it will generate the JavaScript code. Now you will see, that I do not have this REST message v2 method that I was using earlier, the class that we were using earlier, REST message v2, we do not have it yet. Because this is a ServiceNow API, the ServiceNow class that we have. Now we are to use the JavaScript, and to use the same RESTful API into JavaScript, I have a different class, which is XML HTTP request we are using. We do not have this REST message version 2 into our uh, JavaScripting. So we'll be utilizing this one. And using this, we are actually opening this uh, REST API that we have, this endpoint. We are supplying the information and like what, Yes, we are supplying the information like what type of the headers are required to use this. So see, you, I have this accept header, this content type header, this authorization header. Within the authorization header, I am supplying the user ID and password. And then we, I am doing this. The, the, finally, I am calling this uh, you know this endpoint using these two three lines of code that we have. So all the scripting will be done. Meaning, so this, to, you know when... to, to make a call to this endpoint, right. you just have to do this. So you make a call to this endpoint. You know this will execute this endpoint. It will get you one record from the incident table. Now one record from the incident right. table is stored into this request body, right? Right. Right, uh, not the quiz body, the result of this line. Click client.send. So if you do like where response equals. Then you make uh, loops and all that stuff. Yes, you, then you parse it, and after parsing it, you can, you can, let's say you, if you want to, you know, you want to do like doc, document dot, uh, you know, get element by ID and some ID. Sure, sure. dot value uh, equals you want to do response dot number right so here you are uh, setting some value onto the form by getting the number field from the response uh, variable that you have here right? uh, okay. now you can do so the same that's how you yeah. that's how you uh, generate in third party yep. softwares yep now you are talking right. about, you know, now you are going to set like the value of short description on your custom application you want to set from right. the short description field from the response, right? right, right so right. stuff like that you will be doing. Let us quickly right. see how we have done into this custom .dotnet application that I have here. Sure. So here what I have is, and I will show you the functionality of it, the code of it as well. And I will make so you, you made this in C sharp. Yeah, this is a C sharp based uh, interface. C. Yeah. You mind giving me this? Uh, I'll give you the uh, file. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see how the coding is done in the back. All right, I'll give you that. Okay. So see, uh, this interface I have done. This is uh, the basic one, right? Basic stuff right. I have done. Just wanted to, you know, read data from the service and set data right. into service now table so 
this is doing the two operations. So on the top of it, you can see I have this create incident and get incident. When I click on get incident, a drop down list will be displayed here that contains the list of incident exposed for the current user, the WS user that I have here. Oh, I see. Okay. It will come. It is taking some time. Okay, so, so this incident number came. It contains a list of incidents that was created, right, for this user. So this WS user, if, and this is the, this is the U ticket table that we are talking about. This get incidents that we are doing. If I go into this U underscore ticket dot list. So this U ticket table contains these many incidents that we have here. Right. right. And this is getting all those incidents from the U ticket table. Listing out, listing out here. Now if I select one of the incidents from here, let's say if I select this 85 incident, what it does that it reads the incident using the web services and fills out the fields onto the form. See? Incident right. short description, it fills out like this. Incident category populated as hardware. Active right. checked, assigned to as the sysid value coming in from the database. If I change it to let's say incident one, it will change the values accordingly. Right. So it didn't didn't change it. So, so all this data is in service now instance. Yeah, this data that I am seeing right yeah. now is coming from service now instance. Service now. Yeah. And uh, so it's inbound, outbound you know, both ways. So if we create incident, it goes and sit there. Yeah. So we can do so so as well. So let's say if we want to create data, so I'll go and debug this code and we'll show you oh, okay. how it is working actually. So I want to create an incident where I want to put short description as incident requested by a share. Right. 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 Spelling. AF. All right. Yep. All right. Now I'll copy this and I'll put it here. Right. This is this is a hardware type incident and assigned to would be right. let's keep this as assigned to. Right. Now we click on create incident. When you do so, the code comes in here and we are creating an object of the instead uh, the service reference that we included the service reference that we included was ws incident so you can see this right. ws incident dot service now soap client is getting created oh this is directly oh, okay. this is directly calling the incident table not the u ticket table all right so oh, okay. now yeah. i provided the username as ws user and password as ws user again so both user id and password have been supplied now from this uh, WS incident, uh, you know, service reference that I have supplied, I'm going to use this insert method because I have to insert this record into the table, into service table, now. Right. So I'm using this insert method. So I created this WS incident dot insert method from this object browser. See, this insert method. Right. This is the insert method provided into the web services. So I'm going to use this one into my code. And... Uh, show you my system is slow today come on come on come on come on oh. continue waiting so it is waiting for a response I'll close it and then Open it again. Now, since I am making direct call every time that I am doing this operation, it is taking some time uh, to design yeah. the system well. You could load uh, a number of data at the app 
application launch only put it in some XML file or something and keep updating that XML file whenever you do certain operations so that ways you your custom application will perform faster than what we are experiencing yeah. right now uh, but since this is a basic example that I am doing so those features you can assume that will not be available into this Let me, so this is hung so my, sorry about that it is not behaving no that's fine but this is interesting uh, thing for me So the project, this project, I'm going to send you. Okay. And uh, yeah, there are two, two, you know, two projects included with this. One is this okay. form-based application that I have. The other one is the, uh, you know, web web form-based application that I have. There. So you you will have to see both uh, because both of these are handling different scenarios. Uh, we'll talk about it. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talk, talking about. So in, in, in the other one, the web, web application that I have, I am actually using that piece of code that we generated from the script generator. See this JavaScript code that we generated? I'm using it here yeah. into this web application. Using JavaScript, I am calling the web service and setting values into the table. Uh, Mr. Rahul, your voice is very slow. Is it better now? Yeah, now it's better. Okay, so let's continue with the first one. So, well, right. I mean, I have both the examples here. One is uh, to use the uh, to the to use the soap soap web service, and another one is to use the RESTful web service as well. Restful. So both available. Right. Both both examples are available into this project. Okay. Now let's do that again. Uh, we need to create that incident. So let's paste it here. Incident requested by Ashir. Again, I'm using your name into this. That's the hardware type. And system administrator. Although this is expecting a sys ID value right now. I am putting this. This will not go into the record somehow. Now I am going to submit this. Create incident. Now internally it is creating an object of the uh, of the service reference that we created for WS incident. Then it takes the user ID and password. Now it creates the insert method that we have available into this in, uh, web service. Now it creates the response object. Right. So after it create right. response, uh, creates response object, now I am supplying the short description to it. See, the short description value goes as incident requested right. by Ashir. Comment right. is also incident descripted by, requested by Ashir. Description right. category I supplied as hardware. So you Check. see right. hardware, active, we checked it. So active equals true. Assigned to, we right. supplied as system administrator so we have the system administrator here now finally what yes. I am doing is I am using this soap client meaning the web services dot insert method and I'm inserting this insert object that I have right into it right. so this is the way how we interact with the web service so, so I just supplied that information let's see what it does now does it execute or it is it executed and after execution it gives me the incident number that was created inc 00 one zero zero nine four right and it gave right. me this id as well so this is id right. of the incident number has been created so if i go here right. and i do refresh i have right now 13 incidents yeah, it should be 94 
now I have 14 and if I do so here 94 right it brings incidents requested by Ashir if you right. open up if you open this record it will contain all those information that you supplied for example you can right. see the caller is web service user because we didn't supply any caller information onto the form but since the 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 credentials that we supplied there the credentials were WS user WS user password so right. so it it considered the request coming from the user web service user so you have this web service oh, user coming in right your short description is here your description is here into the activity section right and so is the rest information that you supplied from there all right so so using using this example we can see that yes uh, web services calls can be made and you can set data set value into the table now this incident 94 has been created right now if I do get incident it should populate the incident 94 into the drop down as well right see here we go the incident 94 right. came here right so to do so what we are doing is we are reading this database as well we are reading the web service we are doing some get operation Right. So okay. let's quickly see what we are doing on to the get incident method. So I have this get incident method. Now if I do it, if I go back here, and if I click on get incident, when I do so, see what it does. It, do, it does some um, visible false and true settings on certain fields. Now it goes into this get incident details method. When you go into this incident details method, now it is doing the same thing. It is calling the web service, providing the user ID and password. But instead of inserting record, it is now getting records. Right? right. Because right. this time you want to display those records, those incidents into this incident drop down incident combo box so I am getting records from that so using this get records method now I, what I'm doing is I am getting all the active incidents from the table so here I am supplying get records dot active equal true right so all active records from the incident table that we have set for this user will be retrieved and now what I'm doing is here it is actually getting executed right so it executed right. and it gives me so many objects 13 objects are coming in right, right. Now, since there are multiple objects I looped it to, looped here and I am looping it and I am setting values into this combo box so this combo box was incident dot add now what I am doing is I am adding all those values see, see this incident 001 right. now next time it will be incident something else right next time it is one two Right. right or it is doing it, it it is doing it twice so don't worry there is some problem that I should have resolved right so now you can see you know all those incidents are getting included into this uh, uh, drop down and you can see all those incidents coming in right. Right. so whatever incident that you created in there now you are reading it using this get records method get from records. the web service Okay, so both is available here okay. now once you have read read that now you are filling the different fields onto the form like I am filling the short description dot text equals the value that is coming from the database so this short description is getting populated here right the comment is also getting populated so I am populating it using these these you know these lines of code that I have here so this is this is how I am doing a get and a set onto uh, the incident table. This is one example. The other example that I have here is WS import set. So I take you to the other form, right? I can close this one, and I have another form which is WS import set. And here I'll show you what I am doing with the import set web services. So you you see here. I have this U ticket, U ticket uh, web services import set that I have created that contains 12 records right now, right? Yeah. 
Now, what I can do is when I click on this WS WSI set create button, see what it does. It actually creates a service reference of WSI set. So I have this service reference WSI set, uh, which is a reference to the U ticket user uh, web, web service import set that I have. Now, again, same same stuff. I am creating the object of that U ticket web service, and this web service is the import set web service. You you know that, right? And now right. I am going to insert a record using this import set web service, right? Now here I am supplying the short description as sample short description and priority equals one. And remember we had only 12 records into the table, the tickets table. Okay. Now if I keep on executing it and finally it executes, see it executed, it executed. Now if I go back to my instance and do refresh, instead of 12 it should now be 13 records because it has inserted one record into the table. See? So it inserted one record and now I can go ahead and find out I'll, I'll, since I did not supply the incident number so I can find out onto the basis of the created date. And this is the no, not, right not this one, the last one. Uh, yeah, so so the incident was actually created. This is the one. This is the one. Uh, this is the this one. one. Yeah. Right. This is the one that has been created. Now, right. this incident was created into the import set table that we have. Right. So import set table created. Now we can go ahead and schedule our transformation map. And I already have this transformation map onto the web service U ticket. See, I have this U ticket web service. When I click on this U ticket web service, it opens up this web service information for me. Right? Oh, I see. Hang on, there's something wrong. There's something wrong it. Edit web service. Import sets. The interface doesn't look right. It looks weird. Okay, all of this is looking like that. Number of rows removed from this list by security constraint. Why is it removing? Okay, let me refresh this instance. Web service or oh, not web service user, I need to go as a system administrator. Shirin Reshma, you are with me, right? I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm here too. Okay. Okay. This is just the permission issue. It is not showing me that value. Hang on. So this is the problem that happens when I, when I open too many too many windows and one is impersonated to a different user, so it will start plaguing me.
now I can go to web services and I'll open this ticket so here you can see this this is the this is the ticket web service import set that we created see what I've done is I created this ticket import set table which contains the name as u underscore ticket I copied all the target columns from the incident table I had to supply so when you create this type of uh, when you create this type of uh, is import set web services you have to supply certain information like the table name import set the staging table and then you have to supply the target name as well actually you can see it like the incident table if you are doing import set table, web service for the incident table so you'll have to, you will have to supply the incident target table here and then you can copy right. fields from the target table so all the all the fields from the target table will be displayed into this web services as well so this is what I have done I yeah. created this uh, web service u ticket and the target table that right. I wanted to have as the incident table so I, I supplied that information there as well and then when then when this was created along with it what I did is I created you know this transformation history as well the transformation map as well the transformation map that I have is ticket transformation map you can open it when we open this transformation map you will see that on the source table I have this ticket on the target side we have this incident and the mapping that we have you see this field mapping so I have this field mapping exactly the way it should be having there right and uh, this is how I have created the web service import set rest is done by this you know the button. this button <laughs> so we are, we, are call, we are calling it and setting it up into the into into this table right so yeah, so th this is this is how you how you call so so this was all soap that we did soap on to direct uh, direct web service soap as in uh, import set web service now what if we if we have to do a rest rest api call right? right i'll show you that example as well so rest api call we saw that we could generate that code snippet from the rest api explorer and that code snippet can now be used into other forms any any types of uh, you know uh, third party application or a web form from dotnet application which is capable of uh, getting uh, you know uh, getting and setting values into the databases of service now using a restful api so that is what we are doing here so here what i did is i created a web application project so you can see a web app application project here that contains one uh, file which is known as s now rest api called aspx so this is the interface that we have created here you can see in the design mode it will show you a list of certain items where I am supplying the incident number short description category assigned to CMDBCI active this is the progress bar that I have tried to put you know progress uh, text editor text window and the create incident will actually create incident into the table into service now and this rest api demonstration these these are the two labels that i have applied applied onto the form so when you open this form it will look like something like this right and this operation that i am going to do the operation of creating an incident into 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 let me see what table it is is this is the U ticket table so I am doing it onto the web service import set table now this is getting done using the restful API so you can see this the restful API code that we generated from the restful API Explorer that is right. getting used into this JavaScript right so I have this JavaScript so see you can see a script type text JavaScript I have kept here within that I have a function created as create incident right and here from the form I am getting the values that I am setting actually so from the form I am getting the incident number value like incident one two three or something let's put some long incident number so this is the incident number that I supplied here short description is this again category is software or something 
assigned to is let's say Rahul MCMDB CI is any IBM and I'm doing it as check and I'm doing create incident when I do so it created incident you know it showed a message created incident if I go back to the U ticket table let's see what it does in the U ticket table you can see this incident number with the long incident number has been created here right yeah. see so this incident has been created short description we supplied as this incident number category we supplied as software so category is software next assigned to we supplied as Rahul uh, we should have done that using a sys ID so sys ID was not supplied so you it is not getting set here for CMDB CI we supplied as any IBM so you can see this any IBM coming in and active was supply as true so it will have the active equals true value into it right so these values were supplied into the form here and using the rest restful API code that we generated from the rest API Explorer we are doing so so we took the values from the form the incident value the short description the text category the assigned to value all these values are kept into these variables now I created the request object here so dynamic request object is getting created right and you can see into the rest API Explorer that we have we can get our dynamic uh, uh, we can get our request object created from here as well so let's say if I have to do ticket so I'll choose this ticket table from here U ticket and when I submit this let's say I'm doing a post operation right because I need to create a record into the table so I'm doing instead of get I'm now doing a post right? and I am doing ticket here I'll use ticket and the field value that I want to supply is short description I want to supply as short description this okay. number so this is this is just a sample generator right the so number I want to create is this time I am putting one in at the last now next is let's say category I am supplying as DNS or something and assign to and assignment group as database right so this is these are the values that I want to supply now if I do send it is going to create a record into the table and it will give me a 200 201 HTTP response which, which means that a record was created into the table so if I go back to the table you will see that uh, a record would be there into the table you know you ticket right so it created it and see the request body it created the request body it created for us is here if I copy it so this is the request body it created short description colon short description I and see this number colon this category colon DNS assigned to colon Rahul assignment group colon database so this is what it did if I go here and come on not again I'll have to log back again because web service request kicked in so it took the impersonation it impersonated itself so this is the request uh, body that we have to actually generate into the code and this is what I am doing here I am creating the request body I am supplying the number field taking the number field from the incident form the form itself applying that creating this request body then I am filling in these values I am providing this you know endpoint the user ID yeah. and password and then making a call to it right and inserting the record into the database so this is what I have done so if you go into u underscore ticket table now you will have one more record we'll have 15 records you can see the record that we created using the rest API Explorer is here right. of type yeah, database right. right DNS category so you can see it here now this is the same stuff has been done using this JavaScript call into this dotnet application right and this is the rest right. API call that we have done this is the rest API call 
this is not SOAP, this is the REST API call that we have done, right? If you have to get it, if you have to get information from it, so you will do the same stuff, but this time, instead of using the POST method, you will be using the GET method. So get you will choose the table, so do GET method from here, choose GET, and then, you know, choose the table that you want to use, like the ticket table, right? And provide the parameters that you want to provide, you know, it is okay. Now you can generate this JavaScript code. This will, in this time, this will get you the, get you information instead of setting values into the database. You get that information and then decorate your form, your web service, you know, right. you, your web form, fill all these values onto wherever you want to fill out to the form. So this is how it does. Right. All right. Uh, a couple of more things that you have to make sure that you remember is like, you know, in the case of this Windows form, when we were creating this application, we had to supply this information into the configuration file. So you'll see that there is some additional line of code for each number of web services that I'm going to add into this service references. I have to add this code here. Security mode, transport, transport client equals basic, right these things so these are the things that we need to supply this this is the way how we instruct our you know dot net application that hey this is the authentication mechanism that we need to follow in order to communicate with service now web service right. right so this is so the number of times the web services will be added see for the first web service i have this uh, bind configuration identifier as service now soap so for service now soap i did i have this line of code now uh, another one was service now swap two that we created. So for service now swap two, you will also see that the same line of code will appear here. Right? So the number of web services you include, include, you will have to include these lines of code to to make sure that your application understand what type of security mechanism you are going to use there. Right. Right. So this is the thing that we have to do. Um, and then you remember that the rules that we had to we had to set up to allow this user to access the application and the tables. So that is also something that you have to do. Nice. Apart from that, into this uh, web services, you have a one property that you have to set. Not this one. Web services. So web services property. Not again. I'll have to log out. see within the web services properties what I have done is I have a couple of properties set here see require authorization for incoming RSS request is checked as true require right. basic authentication for incoming SOAP request is checked as true as well and right. make sure that this property the element form default is unchecked right you you can read through the ex explanation of what this is doing so these three properties needs to, needs to be set in order to our in order to run our the sample application that we have here. All right. right. So these are related to authentication. So these properties need to be set into your service now instance so that your uh, you know third party application can access the web services that you have exposed. All right. All right. Now, if uh, Reshma is a Java developer, she needs not to, you know, get scared at, at all because, see, these are web services, these are platform independent stuff that we have, right? So, all you will have to do is to find out way how you actually consume a web service into Java application, right? The same stuff can be utilized into your Java application as well and, uh, you can call these web services RESTful or SOAP web services there into your Java application and parse the response that you get from the, you know, web service and then display it onto your application, right? So do not worry about how would you do into Java or Perl or Python, right? 
do not worry about that it's just a call web service call that you are making you got your endpoint you got your credentials now you are supposed to now you are you know free to use that into your application code whatever programming language you are going to use Correct. Make sense? Yes. You can do so much stuff in this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to zip this one. And I'm going yeah, to please. Yeah, I want to see. Because I was thinking I will make, like change something and see how things work in the back end. Okay. I'm going to zip this one and sending it out to both of you. Add to archive, zip. Okay. So Rahul, if yep. I try to watch the video and try to replicate this web service, so where do I try to get the information from? What do I do? Like, can you please? I'm a little lost here. <laughs> okay. Uh, to the starting point. Yeah, I mean, where do I? If I try to get information from a web service, if I create a web service, from where do I get it? Like, if I want to practice it. Oh, if you want to practice. See, that, see hmm. one example that we started with is the direct web service of Incident Table. So you can, huh. if you click, if you do like your base URL dot in, uh, slash incident dot do question mark whistle. So this huh. will expose you an endpoint for the incident table and it will give you a response into the WSDL format. So this is basically okay. the structural information coming in from the incident table and this now becomes okay. a web service endpoint for you which contains all the you know fields from the incident yeah. table. You can see active, activity huh. to assign to assignment group, all these fields are there into this along with the applicable methods that are you know allowed onto this. So if I let me first upload this one. Uh, sample. Okay, now if I copy this uh, web service from yeah. here and I go into my .NET application again, now you have to consume it, right? So uh, you expose the incident table here. Now you have to consume this. Oh. Consume this web yeah. service. Now this this endpoint you can consume in any programming language in any technology which is capable of handling SOAP web services, right? Now my .NET application is capable of handling this uh, SOAP web services. So I'll go in here and I'll basically add a reference to that SOAP web service endpoint that we have. So I'll do add service reference and I'll include this service reference here and I'll do go. So this is the way how we do it in Visual Studio. Connect connect it along oh. uh, with the with the web service. Now when I yeah, do so, service. it will ask for the user ID and password. So I'll have to supply a WS user, the user that I have created for it, and its password. Mm -hmm. Right? When I do oh, so, okay, okay. when uh -huh. I do so, it will actually discover this uh, endpoint that I have here, and it will show me that this endpoint has been discovered. So see, wow. this endpoint has been okay, discovered. Okay. I, when I click it, when I click it, it shows me that these are the applicable methods available into this web service, right? See, oh, update, okay. insert, get record, get keys, get, delete record, delete multiple, right? And these all are available into this web service. You can search here, delete okay. multiple. You have this delete multiple method, right? So this is basically reading your reading through your visual file that you have here for the incident table. Yeah. You can see this delete multiple here. If you do delete record that will also be available so delete record is here if you do get get is also available get okay. get keys we have here get will be also there here we go the operation allowed is get so you have this get operation get keys we saw get records we have get records we have here get records see this all right okay yeah uh, insert yeah. and update so go and find out this insert insert is here insert yeah. operation right update yeah. is also yeah. here 
So all these methods will be available into this web service. Now that we have included this web service Vistil file into our project, we can uh -huh. now use the object of this Vistil file into our project and then make calls to the endpoint and set values uh -huh. using this endpoint into the table. Oh, oh in the, got it, got it, yeah, get it, yeah. Okay, yeah.